Detroit's place in auto industry history is known throughout the world, but not everyone knows that at one time, the small northeastern lower Michigan community of Onaway steered the world. Hundreds of people were employed in the early 1900s, mass producing the auto industry's steering wheels. If you drove an auto at that time, undoubtedly you held a piece of Onaway in your hand everywhere you went. Sally Beatty of the Area Historical Committee explains. It started as the um, Lobdell Emery and uh, grew to be a very lucrative um, lumbering business. Uh, took on many partners. The Lobdells uh, had uh, two or three different partners during that time. And they made steering wheels, broom handles, chairs, bicycle rooms, um, many, many items that maybe we haven't discovered yet. Right. Now, the big one is, of course, the steering wheel, and uh, the steering wheel to probably, if not all of the, the, the cars in that, that area, in that era, the 1920s or, or, or before that. Uh, isn't that right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And we've got a couple of the steering wheels here that were manufactured in Ottaway, uh, such as this one. This one looked like there was a lot of detail in, in this steering wheel that was manufactured mm -hmm. in Ottaway. It says 1919 on it. Now, uh, you were telling me that they did everything here from the actual cutting of the timber right down to this and the forging of the metal in, in, inside. Yes, they also did the metal for the spiders mm -hmm. that uh, fit inside the wheels. Mm -hmm. um, outside of the factory, there were stave mills, lumbering areas that were reached through um, a local dinky line, a railroad, mm -hmm. and they brought that lumber and uh, what they needed into the large mill from those areas by this train. Mm -hmm. So they had a uh, full process of the wheel and they were sent all over the world. Mm -hmm. How long did this last? How long was the, uh, the operation in existence? It was uh, in operation until 1926. What happened? Why did it shut down or what, what was uh, we had uh, We had a very devastating fire mm -hmm. at the mill and with that much lumber and shingles, it, uh, it literally went up in smoke. It was mm -hmm. uh, devastating to our whole area. Mm -hmm. And we understand that we do have some people that who are still uh, in the area who had some experience uh, working in this, uh, uh, the one that steered the world, the factory, the foundry. Uh, we'll be talking to him, uh, Ray, in just a moment. Uh, but we understand, too, that the, the foundry or the factory foundation is still in existence or some of, the, some of the area where the manufacturing took place? Yes, there is two buildings. One is used as a garage. Mm -hmm. And the other one, uh, I believe they house dynamite. It's a small building. The office building is still there and is now housed by the Masonic Temple in Onaway Eastern Star. Mm -hmm. It has had several renovations and hopefully some more will be done to that building. Uh, there is some chimneys that are located throughout the area also that uh, are still standing. We're going to talk to a gentleman, his name is Ray. First name is Ray. He's been here for quite a while, hasn't he? Yes, he has. And he is our historian. Okay. Very, very lovable gentleman. Okay. So let's talk to Ray about uh, the days when Onaway steered the world. Well, this is Ray Young of the Onaway area. You've lived in Onaway all your life, have you? Oh, uh, except for four years in Detroit. Uh-huh. Now, you were involved in one, as one of the employees at uh, uh, the wheel plant back in the early days. Uh, what was your job back then? Well, when I, uh, during the summer vacations, uh, I was a kid about 13 years old. I should have been 14, but I, I got by the first summer. But every summer vacation, I was in the factory, in the finishing department. Uh -huh. But after I finished high school, they took me into the office. I was in the office for four, about four years. You tell me about the, the ovens back then. They were quite hot. And how to, what was that process? Well, they said it was 140 degrees in, during the night. And uh, then in the morning, when they opened those doors, uh, the, these kids that I'm talking about had to pull these racks out and take them. There's a tag at each one uh, telling what had been done to it. You know mm -hmm. where, where to go. Mm -hmm. But we had to pull those out of there, but it was around 100 degrees, this is when they first opened the doors. Do you recall uh, the wages back then? Were you, getting, were you getting rich back then? Oh, I was getting rich. Uh, when I first started, it was 15 cents an hour. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, kids could only work 54 hours a week. You had to quit at 11 o'clock on Saturday. Mm -hmm. 
what, we, uh, 10 hours a day otherwise. Now you were telling me about an interesting a little tidbit about this steering wheel. Now this is probably uh, the first tilt-away steering wheel in existence, I would think. Well, yeah. Cadillac had them. Cadillac had them, uh-huh. Now, like it, they, they, theirs were built just like this, though. Uh-huh. Tell us, what, what's, what is this now exactly? How does this work? Well, here's the little button here. You pull this out like that, and she tilts. That was a tilt. And uh, when you do that, you lock the thing up. Uh -huh. now, when this is locked, you can take your finger and spin this wheel right around the room, but you won't go in, please, uh -huh. because it isn't hooked up to the front wheels. Uh -huh. It's disengaged. Mm -hmm. Then when you want to put it back in business and go places, well, you snap around and away we go. Now, Ray, uh, when we talk about uh, hand craftsmen and uh, hand, uh, hand work, now these steering wheels were not put into a mold and no. turned out that way. Now, these no, were no, no. hand crafted. Well, if you look at them, you'll see these are all sections. Mm -hmm. All cut individually, then glued together. Mm -hmm. And down underneath there, there's two sawtooth washers under each one of these spots here. You'll see little plugs, wood plugs there. Oh, yeah. I can't see it, but I know they're there. Uh -huh. And there's sawtooth washers under them. Uh -huh. They keep that from slipping. And uh, these are all sections and they're glued together. These are cut out of a block of wood. Mm -hmm. See a block of wood put like this, and, and they'll cut it and, and corrugate it. Mm -hmm. So this is hand craftsmanship. And it's really skilled work. It's here. really skilled work. Now, uh, who did the did uh, the plant here in town produce these steering wheels for? Cadillac, Packard, Studebaker, Oldmobile, and Rio. Uh -huh. and, uh, uh, all, all of them were made. D uh, Durant and the Flint car, do you remember that? You know? Oh, sure. Back in the, back in the early uh, 1900s, if you were driving a car, you had a little bit of uh, Onawe in your hands. Yeah. Huh? Well, they said Onawe steered the world. And the fellow got $5 for that little slogan. Oh, he did? Yeah. <laughs> Jim Recomber, give it to him. Well, Ray, we appreciate you telling us a little bit about the heritage we've got here in Ottawa and uh, uh, some of the good old days, uh, or if they were considered good old days, when, when uh, Ottawa steered the world. Thank you very much. Well, you're entirely Appearing on Michigan Magazine. We're talking to area resident Newt Chapman now. Now, Newt, could you tell us what we have here? This is a wheel that was manufactured here. It's a, a wooden pulley that they used the drive belts to run the machinery in the in the Lobdell Emery factory down here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was, of course, made before the, the factory could be set up. They had to have many of these. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was all, this was bought on a local farm here at an auction. Mm -hmm. They just and, happened to be on, on the farm? Did they just happen to run across this? The piece? people the people there worked at the plant and apparently salvaged this after the fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, we purchased it from them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quite a piece of art. I don't know if you can. Yeah, let's take a look at some of the. It's all almost like the steering wheels were in the uh -huh. end. Uh huh. Uh so, huh. All, all, all made of Onaway wood. That's correct. Okay. Mostly maple. Mostly maple. Beautiful maple. Now we have here uh, a piece of what? This is a band saw, a continuous saw that uh, run in the the mill, and uh, they had one guy that worked just all he done was file these saws to keep them sharp. And they were run from a machine in the bottom and up through the second floor and down. And they saw it on the second floor. Mm -hmm. And we have another piece of equipment out in the front that uh, goes along with the story or with the equipment. Mm -hmm. This was found on a uh, local ranch here uh, north of town, close to the tracks where the Lobdell people had a dump. Mm -hmm. And you take their used stuff and stuff that was no good to them out there and dump it over a cliff. Mm -hmm. And uh, this saw come from out there. Mm -hmm. Newt, how, how are you so knowledgeable about these items here? Uh, well, I, I'm a local history buff, I guess. Mm -hmm. I just, I love to uh, dig up stuff about Onaway and I live here and I plan to live here a long time, so. Have you lived here all your life? Or? Yes, I have. Uh -huh. I, I would imagine that there are still some artifacts laying around uh, somewhere in the Onaway area that uh, you've still defined. I, I'm still pursuing them, yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I hope to find some more. I find this a fascinating area because of the steering and uh, the, the product that they did turn out as compared to uh, what uh, many northern Michigan areas were just involved in. It was the timber cutting and we find that uh, this organization here, uh, the steering manufacturers, put everything together from, from Onaway. That's right. This is something that many people don't realize came out of Michigan, and uh, the company is still based in Michigan, I believe. And, right in uh, Elma, Michigan. In Elma, Michigan. But uh, if anybody wants to see some fascinating pages of history uh, that uh, may be a bit of trivia that you didn't realize, to come to Onaway. That's correct, and we we're glad to show anybody. Mm -hmm. We're proud of our town. Now, there's still some remains of the plants 
isn't there, that uh, right. some people might want to take a look at. Right, they're just one block off the main street and uh, there's still a lot of things there that you can visually see that, at the plant. Well, thank you very much, Newt. I appreciate you, uh, yeah, uh, glad to talk to you telling us a bit about some of the pages of Onaway's history. Visitors to Ottawa can get a true feeling of the area's heyday at the Historical Museum, housed in the former county courthouse. Here you'll find, along with history of the steering wheel, the history of the area people, and a proud past. The courthouse became the site of the museum through a couple of state grants, but now is maintained and open through donation and volunteer work. We're talking now to Paul Stankowitz, who's the city manager of Ottawa, and I understand that, uh, well, the city was pretty involved in getting some funds established for this in the beginning, is that right? That's correct. The courthouse is actually owned by the city of Ottawa, and it's been used for district court sessions back in the 40s and was at City Hall at one point. And we did get a grant from the state, in fact, two grants back in 1984, 1987 to start refurbishing the building. And we're doing what we can now to continue that process. Mm -hmm. There's not too many grants available nowadays. No, there's very few dollars coming out of Lansing or, or Washington for that fact. And so we have to do what we can ourselves. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So we invite anybody who would like to learn a bit more about history to come on up to Onaway. And if they could, just uh, donate a few bucks here and there to get some. That's correct. It's a very old town. And we're very proud of our history. and. Uh, we like to do, try and be as self-reliant as possible, and uh, the volunteer help from the Historical Society, the Chamber of Commerce, and the people that do come up from downstate to look at our building are very impressed and uh, usually do help out with a few dollars here and there. This is a fascinating part of history because Onaway is unique in that they did have uh, steering the world as its motto for a while. That's correct. It's hard for me to believe, only being, being here three years now, that Onaway used to have a single business that employed 2,000 people or so, and uh, we'd like to see that again someday. But seeing the history and the old foundation of the building is very interesting indeed. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Paul, for appearing in Machine Magazine. Thank and you. will you wish you the city the best of luck in preserving Thank this? Thank you very much.